Hello and welcome to Creating the Crafty Life Let's Celebrate YouTube Blog Hop. I'd like to give you a little information about the hop before we start here. The hop is a week-long event. It will run from July 29th through August 4th. So you have plenty of time to visit all the hop stops. We have six lovely ladies participating in the lineup. I know we'll have a direct link to everyone listed below. So if you're coming from Jessica, you're right on track, but if you just came across my channel and would like to hop along, please start over with Misty. She's the hostess for this event. There will be a grand prize, and I will have a picture posted at the end of the video, and this is being sponsored by Misty. Some great stuff up for grabs, and winners will be chosen randomly from one of the videos. Plus, there are some hidden prizes from the ladies, too. So make sure that you comment and subscribe and follow on all the hop stops. Um, I think I've pretty much covered it. The theme of this the is let's celebrate. And we were to make a celebration project or a anniversary pro project or a birthday project. Um, this is in honor of Creating the Crafty Life's seventh birthday, and I'd like to let you know that there are also some fun activities planned over on the site this week in honor of the celebration, so you might want to come over and have a visit and see what we have going on. So I think that pretty much covers it. So, oh, also I will be giving away a stamp stencil set from Finnabar, and it is called Spread Your Wings. So I will um, post a picture at the end also so you can see what I have as a prize. So um, let's get started. For my Lit Celebrate project, I decided to create a gift bag for a friend's birthday. And she loves vintage, so I thought this would be perfect. Um, so I started out with a plain paper bag that I picked up. Just plain paper bag like this, picked up at Hobby Lobby. Nothing special. Um, I think it's by Paper Studio. It comes in a 12-pack. And to begin with, I started laying down some different layers. So the first thing I did to the bag was I took some script stamps that I had and I stamped with archival black, black ink all over the top of the bag in, you know, random fashion, nothing precise. And after I did that, I took my gesso and I dry brushed the gesso across the front of it. And then I began to lay down some uh, different papers. Um, I used uh, some hem paper and then some scrapbook paper. Um, this one happens to be from um, a pad that's been in my stash for a long time. It's this one. Um, and I just tore them and uh, glued them down with some uh, of my glue stick. I, I like this, this particular glue stick. And after that was done, um, I had purchased some uh, collage paper by Tim Holtz. And I believe this one's called Floral. Yeah. And... Um, I just took a piece of it and you can see where I've taken it, but you just take a paintbrush and dip it in some water and you lightly go around the outside area of the image that you want to, to uh, use and you gently, after it's wet, you gently tear around it. It just, it comes right apart. You can see the edge there. It just tears. And then I glued that down on top of the corner there, this beautiful rose, peach color rose, with this paper anyway. It was, it was really uh, fun to work with this. Um, added a beautiful layer. And then I started to kind of play around with my composition. Um, oh, I think I, I did add some... I did go back in and I, I added some different pieces of, of uh, washi tape randomly throughout on the bag. Um, I believe this is some 
Tim Holtz tissue paper, uh, but any kind of uh, tape like that just adds some layers and, um, you know, more depth to it. Um, I kind of played around with my composition, like I said. Um, I, I picked a picture that I thought I'd like from the ticket strip, Tim Holtz ticket strip, and cut that off and um, went around the edge with a distress tool and some uh, vintage photo and ground espresso ink, I believe. And then, uh, so I had that picture, and I kept kind of, I didn't glue that down until last. I kind of kept playing with my composition and seeing how I wanted things to look. Uh, I had pulled some different laces from my stash. This is one of the laces I laid down here. Um, another uh, lace, I cut a couple of, the, of these medallions off here and used right here. Uh, I also used this lace right here just, just up in the corner with another little piece of scrap. Um, went through my buttons and, and, you know, played around, you know, and ended up putting, I layered my lace down, you know, just used some three-in-one to glue my lace layers down. And then I decided kind of which flowers I wanted to use. And um, they're just some uh, Finnebar Prima flowers that I purchased at Michael's, very neutral. And what I did was uh, I used some Opal Magic Wax in the vintage silk. I used that on the flowers, brushing on the flowers. And um, I also used it on the, the leaves down here. The leaves are cut from a die that I own um, with some lightweight chipboard, probably recycled cereal boxes because that's what I like to use. And I cut it out and then I used the um, gathered twigs, I believe it was, Distress Oxide ink to just color my chipboard and then I went back over it with the vintage uh, silk wax and um, added a really nice shimmer. So I knew I wanted to use those leaves. Um, and then I also used um, a little butterfly from this um, botanic uh, Tim Holtz layer set. And um, I also found from the clipping stickers, I found a little saying that says beauty and grace, and I decided to use that. So it just was... Um, you know, kind of playing here to decide what I wanted to um, build up on. And after everything was glued, then I started, you know, after I made my composition, then I start gluing down elements. And like I said, I saved the picture for the last, but um, this is a scrap from an old curtain. I laid that down under the picture, um, glued on my um, trims here, glued down my leaves, Next, I popped up the flower on um, a little bit of some uh, cardboard to give it some height. The pitcher is popped up on a little bit of cardboard to give it some height. Tucked the little gardenia underneath. Um, tucked the little um, butterfly moth little guy down here. He's popped up on a really thin piece of cardstock. He doesn't have much height, just a little bit. And before I glued um, the picture down, I took some thread and just wound up a bunch in a ball, kind of, and kind of tore it a little part a little bit and just stuck it under the picture. It just adds some more um, nice texture. So at that point, everything is finally getting glued down. Like I said, that's the last thing. And the little sentiment, I, I put that on a glue that to a little piece of cardstock cut around it, put some distress ink around it, and then glued it down. And the very last thing I did was I took the vintage silk wax and I hit different areas on the bag um, and even in a couple of the corners, opposite corners of the picture. 
I, I used a little bit of the, the wax. It just gives a really pretty shimmer and, and just looks really, really nice. Um, the scraps I used up here, just glued at the top, just to add a little something with a little button. Um, and I really like how this little gift bag turned out. Um, it was inspired by uh, Finnebar. She had done a gift bag paper, brown paper bag. Um, I didn't do all the techniques that she did. I kind of gave it a little bit of my own spin, but I did do some of her techniques, and I, I really I really love how it turned out. So anyway, that's uh, my share. This is the Finnebar stamp set and stencil set that I will be giving away. So make sure to comment, subscribe, and follow on my blog to be eligible. And next up on our lineup is Stephanie, and she is listed in the links below, so go check her out. Thanks a lot.